back end of October, uh, I started reading little snippets, little things called nibs and using briefs, little three, four line pieces, and little nibs coming out, not in, not in the Independent, in, in like the Wall Street Journal, or the New York Times, or the, the, I, the FT in London, um, and there were little things that I didn't think we were picking up on at the Independent. Um, and basically, it was the fall of fall of fall of communism. It was the collapse. And I said to the editor, to Andreas, "Can I just go and sit it out in East Berlin, um, if I can get in? I mean, you know, we didn't even know whether we could get in and out." You know. And he said, uh, "Yes, yeah, okay." And I think that was the the fifth or the sixth of November, the fifth of November, eighty nine. And I walked around East Berlin, and it really was like going back into you know. A working John Le Carre novel. It was. It was. Um, it was. It was. It was dark. It was black. The light bulbs were thirty watts. And, uh, the, in the West, they were one hundred and fifty watt. The the atmosphere was was filled with um, the clag of burning lignite coal, which went round the light bulb. Yeah, the whole thing was really spooky. In fact, if you'd have designed it as a film set, um, it wouldn't have been believable. Um, and I'm very pleased that uh, Spielberg got it pretty damn right in uh, Bridge of Spies, uh, even though I understand he filmed parts of where they built the wall in Krakow in Poland. But, you know, the irony there of filming a German thing in Krakow in Poland. Anyway, fine. But 89, I uh, sat it out, and on the night, the evening of the 9th, I got a phone call in my hotel. Patricia Clough had come in from Bonn. She was the uh, independent uh, German uh, correspondent. And um, I got a phone call from Andreas, and he said, I've just seen a snap wire on AP, which is basically a, 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 an urgent wire from Associated Press, saying the wall is coming down tonight. And this was all to do with complete cock-up in the, uh, in the Volkskammer, in the, in the uh, German parliament, where um, Krentz uh, had, been, uh, had been kicked out, um, and one of the parliamentarians made made a mistake to a journalist and said, "Yes, it is. Yes, it is." In response to a question, no one really knew what the question was, and I even got the address from my editor. So I rushed down, tried to get my car out, the car pound at the hotel, and the guy who had the keys had gone home for the night. And I found a cab outside the hotel, grabbed that, um, went off to uh, Bernerstrasse in uh, northern Berlin, and. Um, Yep, sure enough, there was a crowd of three or four journalists, a couple of TV crews, a couple of radio people, me, some local people who really didn't know what the hell it was going on, and a dumper truck with a great big grabber on the front. And I did use a flash. I did have a flash on the camera because it was night time. And um, I put the flash on the camera and tried to fire it off, and the batteries were dead because I hardly ever used it. So I had to get a radio reporter to give me some AA batteries out of her pack it and uh, anyway I, I jumped on the dumper truck and said please you know stop 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 uh you know I, I i need to sort my gear out and it started to rain and then they took the top chunk out of the wall and it was the first bit of the wall that came down and it was about 10 o'clock on the night of the 9th of november my driver was still there i promised to pay him 50 deutsche mark west western marks which was like you know, three months salary for him if he stick with me and take me back to the west um when the wall started to come down of course, on the other side were the East German border guards. They were young kids. They didn't know what the hell was going on. I mean, they had guns, whether they had any bullets. No one was really going to find out. And I did the pictures, and it was then by 11 o'clock, so that would have been best part midnight in London. We only had two or three editions at that time, and I knew our first edition had probably gone at uh, 10 or 11 o'clock. And I thought, well, by the time I get to West Berlin, find Reuters' office, or to process my film and then transmit. It's going to be two or three o'clock in the morning. So I made a decision, an executive decision, to leave the news event to the agencies and to cover the story properly. So I said to my driver, OK, let's get out of East Berlin. And we tried to get out on the route he could get out of East Berlin. And he could get through, but I couldn't because I didn't have the right stamp in my passport. He couldn't come through Checkpoint Charlie because that was only for Westerners to go out. So he dumped me at Charlie and I walked all the way around the, the wall with my equipment, completely exhausted, 
found myself a tree, climbed up a tree overlooking the um, the, 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 the excitement on the wall. And these German border guards at that stage, they weren't sure what the heck was going on either. Um, so they started hosing everybody off the wall. And here is a picture. I don't know whether you can read it. I'll show it to you in higher res. But that is a picture of the border guards on the night at 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, and once I got that in the can, so it's 3 o'clock London, I found another driver, another cab, took me to the airport. The British Airways flight was going out at 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, my stuff was freighted. It was back in London by 11.30 and in the darkroom in, uh, in the office in City Road in London uh, just after lunchtime, and we made the back page I made the whole of the back page with a set of photographs of life in East Berlin, plus that picture I've just showed um, as the as the main eight column frame on the back page, and that was just wonderful. And I stayed in I stayed in Berlin for another ten days or so. And <laughs> the whole thing about newspapers is, you know, the stories the stories go dead very very quickly, and even something as big as the fall of the wall died.